Hi everybody, my name is Kate Fogg and with me is Julie Hurt and together we are Making Light to Humans Being. And today's episode is going to be all about finding balance. So take it away, Julie. <laughs> yeah, so this um, is something I've been, I would say, struggling with or um, thinking a lot about. So a lot of mornings I will pull a card from my um, angel tarot card deck, which is a Radley Valentine deck. Um, and lately I continually pull the uh, balance card, which is Archangel Zadkiel. And I've even done some deeper dives on, okay, so what do I need to know about balance to understand? And I do know that I have a lot on my to-do list between my business, Making Light, the Animal Communication Collective, TAing for Danielle. I chair a board of, an, of a nonprofit in Alaska <laughs> for which I have a board meeting coming up. Um, and just all the things that make, uh, you know, to all the things with Lucas and, you know, I like my house, a certain cleanliness and all that. There's a lot. And my parents, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on. And I find myself and I really, but I will say, I will also inject here that I really, really enjoy like creating content and whatnot to um, put out there as far as making lighter my business or, you know, communication collective. I really, I, all those things I so enjoy. The thing is, though, that then I don't have a lot of time to read, which is one of my favorite pastimes, and I don't have a lot of time to just breathe. And I know, like, I think, was it last week, Kate, we talked about um, if we just had a day <laughs> to read or something like that, would we do it? Or I think that's, I even went down that path. So we went camping last weekend because it was our 15th wedding anniversary. So we were camping Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday and Sunday, it rained on and off. So we were forced to chill, right? Which was wonderful. Um, I did finish a really good book about migratory birds. Um, so it was actually, and I really tried, and I like was really, really gunning for all this stuff to be tied up in a nice little bow and then go camping and stuff didn't get tied up in that. I let a lot of it go, but I've just, and oh, I should say, but that day to just read a book, the day that it would really rain, the sun came out or stopped raining at some point. So I'm like, oh, let's have a fire. And I had a new book to read. And I just sat there for three hours at the fire. I just looked at the fire and the light that came through the trees. And there weren't a lot of birds because the migrations already started. And, and I just sat there. It was so nice. And so now it's so funny because we were talking before we hit record about the morning comes and the anxiety builds like that's been happening to me too. It's like, oh, I get really tired by seven 30 at night, I'm ready to go to bed. Um, Brad's taken on a new freelance gig. So he's up until 10. So I've been trying to kind of at least stay around him. So he doesn't feel like he's the only one working just cause it's, it's an intense thing. And I just want to, and it's okay. I just sit and read a book next to him. So that's good. Like I try to do it that way. But anyway. Well, no, 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 let's visit that. <laughs> yeah. Why, if the situation was reversed, mm -hmm. do you think Brad would feel he had to sit up with you? Does he even know what you're doing? Mm, I don't think so. I haven't said, they just started, the freelance project started two days ago. it was his choice right yeah you warned him it was going to be a lot of work mm -hmm. you did not ask him to take it on in order to earn more money no why do you feel you have to babysit him I, because i try to make everybody happy that's been my role my whole life has been peacemaker From he probably doesn't even know you do it no he doesn't. Now, i'm not suggesting that you you fuck off the bed at 7 30 and leave him but do you genuinely view that as time that you can do your own thing or do you feel you have to be available i.e if he wants to rant off about something i mean are you in the same room as him we have a, yeah, we kind of have a house that's just a room. 
<laughs> so yeah, but no, I'm doing my own thing. I'm not sitting there like, okay, what do you need? What do you need? You know, I like, I'll either just sit, I'm trying to use the time as a way to one, not have the television on. Okay. To read or sit quietly. Cause I find that when I try to sit quietly, my mind, like I had to listen to a meditation twice today because in the middle of it, my head went somewhere I'm like, God bless America. <laughs> and I had to come back. Um, anyway, so I try, I'm trying to like decompress before bed. So I'm using the time. So I'm like physically present, but I'm trying to use it in a way to do some other practices or if I feel like a, this just started two nights ago, so this is brand new, or I may take the time to do a little clean, whatever it feels like I want to do. But right now, because of this whole balance thing, I want to try and take the time to find a way to balance. I want to make sure my phone is, well, my phone is usually off, meaning the sign ringer is silenced, but I will sit and look at my email till 10, 10, 30. And I have been finding myself find, looking at my email I check it one more time and I have four email addresses Four, so I'm checking all four. Yeah. And I've got, you know, the three, almost four, so five social media platforms that I check. Um, so I've got like all these things and I am like, and I'm like, why am I doing this? What are you checking on your social media? If anybody has um, made a comment that needs a response that I because if someone makes a comment, I feel like I need to respond. So can you not do that once a day, though? I could. And therein lies the balance that I'm trying to figure out how to do. So I have um, I, I worked out a timetable for my media. Stuff. That's interesting. I just listened to something about finding a timetable. Oh, cool. But yeah. what I didn't put on that is. So I've now put in my diary, post for barking at the moon, post for the shed. So they're there because otherwise I spend my whole time going, oh my God, when did I last do that? And I mean, I don't do anything like as much as you. Mm -hmm. I feel better now that I know it's in my diary and actually I'm doing more than is in my diary. And if I do more than is in my diary, I put it in my calendar that I did it so that I can refer back. But certainly in terms of checking comments and stuff like that, I would set a time for it. Because that's a black hole of time. It's also not good for the spinning off. Um, if, if you're using that time constructively, then I think it's a really good thing. Mm -hmm. um, what's interesting, yesterday, they turned our power off for, I, we thought it would literally just be, they're putting um, three phase electric up at the farm. I can't remember why, they tell me. Um, but they said it could be off any time from nine till four thirty, and it went off at quarter to nine, which is a bit cheeky, I think, because you know you could have been just about to boil a kettle for the last cup of tea, because it's cold here, and yeah. none of our heating, even though we've got oil heating, nothing works when the electric's off. Not even you know, even if it's oil heating. Um, so anyway, so come three thirty, we we're getting a bit nervous because it wasn't on again, and I have guests that fortunately were away for the day in Edinburgh. Um, but the point is that albeit that I was doing playing a game on my phone, so it wasn't on an electronic device, which I, you know, can get away from electronic stuff, but it's more, I, I enjoy the game. It's actually quite nice because I couldn't do anything else. Mm. I couldn't do, because I now have an iMac and not a laptop, I couldn't work on my computer, so I couldn't do any social media, I couldn't do any accounts, I couldn't do... I could do internet shopping and actually I did do it on Tesco's on my phone sitting in the chair right next to Gary which made it a lot easier because normally I'm down here going does he want kidney beans does he want halloumi because obviously I'm not eating at the moment mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, it's not, you know temptation to phone him and go did you want <laughs> did you want halloumi um but it was actually quite nice and do you know what it's so quiet mm. I can't believe how much noise I suppose predominantly the fridge makes in the house it was it was like that time you know when you go somewhere and you go when oh, you can hear the silence mm -hmm. it was absolutely amazing I could hear this like grumbling noise I'm thinking what on earth is that noise it was so quiet that I've got a little cheap I, I think it's lovely but it's just made of cardboard but it's a sort of 
um, Parisian cafe clock that looks very nice, but it's just made of cardboard. And it was just one of those cheap little battery clocks that go around. It was a clock. That's how quiet I could hear the <laughs> of the clock that's like 20 meters away on the wall. That's how quiet it was in the house. It was just beautiful. But then I started to get, I got into all this sort of resentful about why do we have to have things that make noise? But that quiet time, I think, like it's only when you're sitting there and you go, oh my God, I never do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the quiet in the, because it's cold here too. So there's not a lot of people camping um, where we were. Um, so we had lots of space around us and we were also in a, there were four campground loops. This is a national park. There are four campground loops and we were in the one that had no hookups, which we actually prefer, even though we have an RV, we prefer not having um, electrical hookup or because we don't, we actually have a microwave in our RV, but we don't ever really use it. We actually are thinking of taking it out. So we've got more space. We took the TV out when we first bought the RV because um, why would you go camping and bring a television? We don't, it's not something we understand. If y'all do that, that's fine. I'm not judging. I'm just saying like for us, it just didn't make sense. So anyway, so, but when the rain hits the top of the camper, oh, it's beautiful. And then when the wind blows through, there's white pines and red pines. And when the wind blows through the pine trees or even the, there were oak trees everywhere. Um, when the wind blows through, just the noise that that makes or the hissing of the fire, like to hear all of that is just, is amazing. Which reminds me of this guy, his name's Gordon Hempton. And he's trying to find the last places on earth that have no human noise. And there's like seven or something. I mean, there's like, it's Gordon Hempton, H-E-M-P-T-O-N. But I'll put it in the notes. I'm going to look him up because that's where I want to go and live. There's, um, oh my God, well. <laughs> um, there's not many of them. There's not many of them. I don't, I don't even think Denali is on the list because planes fly over Denali. Oh my God, since COVID, I don't know if they've changed the flight paths. Mm -hmm. I am so aware of planes and mm -hmm. there's just fucking planes all the time. You're like, I've lived here three years. We didn't used to have planes, loud planes. You're mm -hmm. like, I live in the countryside because I don't want you people bothering me. And now you're invading my airspace. Uh -huh. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, They'll, they, you can tell the days where we lived in Anchorage, we lived real close to the airport. And so there was a time when they were redoing the runway. So the 747s would take off right in front of our house. I mean, it would be like this, this humongo plane and the noise. And I always thought, and the airport was really close to this huge, huge park that that's where we would take Lucas all the time. To part of the part of the places we would take Lucas all the time, moose everywhere, bear, black bear, not brown, but black bear, um, porcup that's where we got porcupine. Anyway, but I kept thinking, oh my God, how do these animals like handle all this noise? They're used to it, but still, yeah, these, there was, um, Gordon Hempton appeared, there was a podcast, I think it was like This American Life, or it was a different, I don't remember which one, but he takes a group of, um, he takes these journalists to, I think, out into the wilderness and he has them sit in, well, it's in, it's one of the quiet places that he's discovered. And he has them sit for, I don't know, half hour, maybe all by themselves. And like no one around, like he, they go that way and everybody else goes the other way. And they, they talk about how in that little bit of time, which felt like a really long, long time, it was actually so cathartic. They all came out and these are guys and they all came out like crying and everything just because of how beautiful everything sounds when we can absolutely hear it. Oh, see my resentment boiling up now. <laughs> Cause that's just it. I feel so put upon by all these things that, we, that, that it's impossible practically for any of us to, to live away from these things. Don't get me wrong. Of course we get, we get used to our conveniences, but you know, it's really hard to escape all this stuff. The, the um, Ari Witten, I don't know if you remember when I, I did his energy blueprint, but um, in his first few videos are free, which I recommend to anyone. I didn't actually do the course and I wouldn't do it unless I had chronic fatigue or something like that. But I learned so much from the four videos leading up to that that I actually didn't need the course. But one of them is, 
all people, even people who have significant and chronic sleep problems, take them camping when it gets dark, when there's nothing for them to do, and they are, and people who insist that they're night owls, mm -hmm. if you take away electricity, it takes them 24 to 36, 24 to 36 hours, I don't even know if it's like one night, they're sleeping perfectly. Oh, yeah. At dark and waking up in the morning. Yeah. You know, because there's so much influence of light and noise, and it's not just the obvious distractions, it's pinpoints of light that trigger your... Um, wake your circadian mess up your circadian rhythms and stuff like that I mean I do sleep with blackout um things on now I'm a real sight because I I cover my lips with um tape from the breath that book that Danielle recommended breath it was about how you breathe mm -hmm. and I have a mask on so I go to bed like like that, I can't speak to them. I'm like Gary talks to them. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That means good night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there it's a big difference to how I sleep. Yeah, the actually, my dentist wants me to do a sleep study, but not. I don't disagree here with our fabulous healthcare system. Um, it could cost me a lot of money, and uh, that I don't necessarily have right now. Even though I know my health is way more important. Um, but it's also on my to-do list to figure out with the insurance company what what I can do. But that's so, yeah, on the sleep. But there's another woman, you reminded me of, um, her name's Florence Williams. And she did a lot, she does a lot of, um, I think she might be a journalist, but she's also done um, work in quiet places. And she has a book, um, it, I know for sure it's on Audible, it's called The Three Day Effect. And they, she found that different groups that would go camping for three days, so get outside in nature, no noise, no devices, total disconnection and just reconnection with the earth, they would take um, PTSD um, soldiers, they would take women traumatized by violence and another, and another group. And within three days, the people, they were able to sleep, just like you said, that's what reminded me of it, sleep, begin to heal, release some things, realize that like the trauma that came to them was not their fault. They didn't ask for it. Like it's so rough. And that's just three days out in nothing. So, so Brad and I we thought a friend of ours was coming to visit in October, but I don't think we don't think she is now, but we were planning, we're going to go camping again to the same campground. Um, one more, at least one more time, because it was just so. So you, you managed that downtime, well done. How does that impact your balance when you got back? I know that's, and that is interestingly enough, if I didn't get a big enough sign from Archangel Zadkiel, then my whole horoscope for this week is I, because I um, listened to Channing Nick, Goals? Is it Nick? I always get her. I just know Channy. Anyway, so I have the Channy app. I love this woman. She's amazing. Um, but she, my whole um, thing right now is also about balance. So the new moon is in Libra right now. So this actually impacts a lot of people, not just, not just Taurus and Leo rising, but anyway, um, but it's really about trying to find in daily routines, how to strike that balance. So being able to stop looking at my phone, I would say no later than seven. I'd like to get it to 5.30. Um, being able to read. Can I caution you on that? Why? Well, I think it's a good thing. Yeah. Right? But setting up, if you have no reason ever to check your phone after 5.30, that's fine. But sometimes being too ambitious will cause you to fail and then you give up on the whole thing. Oh, yeah. No, I, yeah, I'm aware of that. I just... You know, even if you just say, right, so my work day ends at 5.30, I think that's an important thing to do. But you can also say, I can check my personal emails till 7 or something like that. But if you make it too rigid, my feeling is that you it's... You, you have to set yourself up for success mm -hmm. um, because otherwise I think we react violently to oppression as we see it at the time. When you're Because I, I am guilty of that. I read these things and there'll be 20 things I have to do and it will say, just do two and I'll go, listen, fuck off, I can do 10. 
Mm. Like, yeah. You know, this girl works hard. This girl gets it done. And and then after a day, I'm like, this is some hideous, torturous regime. I'm never, you know, um, I'm very conscious, and it is in your DNA, I would say, to do things to the nth degree that perhaps um, aren't necessary. Like as in, gently, gently, heal gently. As yeah. Tom would say. Yeah. Well, you know, I know this is this has been coming up for. When June, July, August. So this, I mean, my at least third month, if not fourth, in trying to figure out how to balance. And what's interesting to me is that of the last couple of weeks, my plate has gotten even fuller and the balance even more out of whack until we went camping. And I know that when you, when one continues to answer email at whatever time, you continually get more email, like, because you're putting it out, you know, Red Law of Attraction, so you're putting it out there. And so I found, like, I didn't really check. I checked my email once a day while we were camping just to make sure that someone wasn't trying to reach me, even though I had an out of office on, um, just to make sure someone didn't need something or whatever. Anything that could wait, I just didn't respond to. There was one, two people I responded to, um, and that was it, and just said I was camping and I would get back to them on Monday. Um, but anyway, but I, it's all for me, like the pendulum is way over here. Like my body can feel it too. I had a massage yesterday and my whole right side, which my scoliosis goes this way. My leg is broken on my right side. Like my whole body is like skewed and twisted towards that side. And so she was able to untwist it to a degree, but I, you know, so I'm aware of, so my body's doing stuff. My guides had said to pay attention a couple months ago to my heart. So I've since been to the doctor. I guess everything's fine. Um, so I'm not quite sure. But anyway. Can you not? Is there not another message in there? Probably. <laughs> heart Pay attention to my heart. Yeah. Heart chakra. Yeah. Yeah. The way they came the first time they said it, then they came across it was I do have heart disease in my family history. So so I am aware of it. Um, anyway. So blah blah blah. But the pendulum's way over here. So I need to pull it for me I have to like pull it back so it starts to find a middle type of thing I miss my books I've got a big presentation I get to do on November 9th live about animal communication and spirituality I'm stoked about it so I'm writing an outline and that I'm doing that why are you doing that a place in Midland Michigan um, called Creative 360 they invited me to come and speak on it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's going to be so much wow. fun. Wow, how did they find you? Uh, they found me through our teacher, Danielle, and then did a okay. bunch of research on different different um, people that they saw. And they were- uh, Oh my God, or on the site? On Danielle's, on the site, on her website where they find us. And then they, she was drawn to me. And then she found out that I actually don't live too far away. So I do. I know. That's me that's taking care of you. I know. I'm so excited. And I'm just like, and it totally ties up because I was like, where do I want to focus what I talk about? Which this is a big thing. So which is okay. So here's another clue, right? So I read this book called A World on the Wing. It's all about migratory birds. It starts off in Alaska. So and they mentioned the organization that I chair in the or in the book too. So I'm like, oh my God, this is like yay. Um but the very last chapter, he talks about this group of hawks that I think it's in Nagaland, Nagaland, that these hawks live um, and they how they migrate through. But the very last paragraph, he talks about um, reverence and how when you see these swarms of birds that they're migrating through and that we have a duty to some degree, we have a duty to help protect them, to be in harmony with them, to integrate with them. Like he talks about how these, all these hawks, the hawks or falcons, I can't remember, rose up. I mean, thousands of them, like hundred thousands of them. And he's watching them like come up out of the canopy of the tree in the morning light. And he's like, it's just absolute reverence. I'm like, yes, that's, that's the balance to me is to find that. How can I, how can I have that? Because I need that study reverence meditation something time i don't know baking kind of i don't know 
it's hard mm -hmm. it is hard and it's so easy to say you know take care of yourself do this that and the other and there's this other shrieking voice in your head going yeah but who's gonna do where's the money gonna come from where's this you know it's um yeah I think the, the other thing though let's focus on the positive is if I don't if you cast your mind back to extreme self-care when you were living in the RV and you took some time to do some extreme self-care and you said that problems didn't even problems that hadn't even been anticipated dissolved before they became problems mm -hmm. yeah. and that's all because you're in that state of mind that says mm -hmm. not a problem mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah it's, yeah it's um it's a practice <laughs> it it's it's really hard what i've been trying to do the last few days because i've been completely overwhelmed by things that i have absolutely no control over um and i i um so the example i have so i, I have this sort of underlying anxiety which really irritates me because i don't think of myself as an anxious person but I'm getting all the physical symptoms I think it's because I just didn't know before because it was just life um I get in all the physical manifestation of anxiety in the mornings and I don't it's just a sort of underlying anxious panic and I can feel it coming on like it doesn't come on if I wake up in the middle of the night it only comes on when it, I know it's nearly time to get up um but there was this so here's an example so so the, I noticed there were sparks. We had a really, really windy night. I had a, I've got a honeymoon couple in the guest house, and I noticed that there were sparks. I just looked out to make sure they've got the thing lit because it's quite hard to light the wood stove because it's a, a wood fired stove that heats the hot tub. Um, and so I, I looked out to make sure that they managed to light it because it can be quite hard when it's really windy. And I noticed there's sparks coming out the top. Right? So there's a wooden pergola, and I'm thinking, hmm. I've never seen that before. Then, of course, comes in the ego. Oh, my God. When did you last get the chimney swept? Mm. Is, the chimney, is there going to be a chimney fire? Does it matter if there's a chimney fire? What will happen? Will everything burn down? Will the pergola burn down? Is this your fault? What do you do? All of that. So I went through this whole part. I kept looking out. I was looking up on the internet why it should happen. It happens if you have softwood. I was like, it shouldn't be softwood. I pay a lot of money for premium hardwood wood. But Gary goes, it's raining, the wood is wet, there's a really high wind. So it can happen, you can get sparks out. But, you know, you read on the internet, of course, the first one goes, shut everything down, never light your fire again until you've had a fire safety officer out. You know? wow. I mean, I'm like, fair enough, that's in the house. It's like, what is the worst that can happen? The worst that was is a chimney fire. Does it actually matter? Would it burn a pergola down? Gary goes, unlikely, it's fucking Scotland, everything's wet. <laughs> um, but, you know, but then I'm like, and so I, I had a real one of these magnificent tussles that I have with myself where I go I don't know what the right answer is and I've been backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and actually Gary Mr Health and Safety calmed me down and I was, he's like uh, you know just leave it Kate it's fine we're not going over there to tell him to stop using the hot tub I in the morning I managed to look out when they went out I couldn't see any evidence of any bits actually falling so they were literally just sparks that had disintegrated um but then I'm worried you know again I've worked out it's due to be clean but it's not overdue so it's probably not that but I don't know and then then like oh what if what if so I actually had to sit down and talk to myself and I did manage to get to my guides because I just find things like that really hard and I'm like I don't know what to make of this and I'm getting all this from the gut the, my muscle testing was telling me because I use muscle testing when I can't you know when it's too complicated to talk to guides or, or you know muscle testing was like it's fine and I was hearing that from my guides it's fine don't worry about it and then I was like well I can check tomorrow when it's not windy so I did check last night there was a few sparks and again again doesn't matter so actually this morning when I meditated I was like I said I need to talk to my guides like what is this is this coming to my attention and making me anxious because there's something I need to do in order to prevent a fire or is it my ego going? And here's another thing you didn't do, Kate. You didn't. You should have. You need to go out there, and tell them to stop using the wood. You know, and you need to phone an emergency chimney sweep and all of this drama. And my tendency is to pull to that because that way I'm doing everything possible to keep everybody safe. 
Mm -hmm. But that becomes a real issue because I'm like, how do I know the difference between my guys going ding, 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 ding? You've got a potential issue here. And my ego that goes, oh, my God, woman, when did you last get the chimney? And everybody's going to die and it's all going to be your fault. But I did when I calmed down and talked to myself about I need to genuinely understand, is this an issue? I got this nice, calm voice that said, no, there's no issue here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, so then I know, you know, that it's the first time that I've actually felt comfortable about it. I'm not saying it's not going to stop me looking out tonight. <laughs> but it is hard to know the difference. But, mm -hmm. but you're the same. It's this, this pull towards mm -hmm. all the things you should have done. Because if you didn't do them, in my case, I was a nasty, evil, selfish person, but essentially not good enough, never good enough, could never be good enough. And now you're aware of an issue and you still haven't done anything. So you're doubly evil, selfish, lazy person. Mm -hmm. But it's a real struggle. I don't know how I got onto that. I think it's just all about balance too. Yeah, no, because I, that's, you were reminding me that I'll like, I don't know. Did I say that? I don't know if I said it when we were recording her before, but I went to do a little meditate. Oh, from Chani, I did a, my daily meditation, which today was on an abundance thing. And halfway through, I realized I wasn't listening to her. I was listening to my head going, okay, you got to do this and you got to do this and you got to do this. And I'm like, whoa, and I, re I caught myself and I started the meditation again. Um, I don't think I made it through successfully. <laughs> I rarely get through a whole meditation without wandering off. That's what I really like about David G. When I started doing before, now I don't listen to anything, but when I started doing it, he always goes, you know, when you wander off, just pull yourself back gently. You know, it's all very sort of, you will wander off. Mm -hmm. You just come back. Mm -hmm. you, I also like the fact that you get, he says something like, um, what is it? He says, I'll... I'll ring the bell when it's time to come back. Like he takes responsibility for everything. So he's basically like, off you go, you go and play in your little fields and I'll call you back when it's time. Yeah. That's how I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I used to do, when I would meditate, I used to do and let my mind just flow so that it would like either wear itself out or um, wear itself out something just dinged and I don't know what it was it wear itself out and um or it was my guides trying to get through to me and then I started this new meditation app that actually comes up for renewal here shortly and I don't think I'm going to continue it but um but they want you to be really really quiet and recognize oh there's a thought and let the thought go away and I'm just like I don't know I don't know I'm trying to figure out the what's best I like a guided meditation that's talking at me because it keeps my mind occupied. But I'm also finding I'm not really, I don't, I don't know. It, I feel like I'm being occupied. So then I actually don't connect is what my guides are telling me. What, what do you find is most constructive in speaking to your guides? I'm asking for a friend. For me right now, what I've been playing with lately is falling asleep. When I, as I get ready to go to bed and I lay down, I ask my main guide who happens to be Aslan from the line, the witch in the wardrobe, I talked, I asked him, I just, you know, I just go, hi, how's it going? <laughs> like, I just start to have a conversation with him. And then Sally Heike had said at one point, this was a couple of years ago, like, don't um, ask, or ask them what you, what you could learn from today, where, what you could have, what was something that you saw or happened to you that the next time you can, there's growth in there for you. Um, I'm choosing my words really carefully because I don't want to say what we did wrong in a day or what we could improve upon. Um, but anyway, so, sh so I, I kind of check in that way and I'm actually finding that I'm having this little conversation with him and then I fall asleep and I've been having really incredible dreams too. I couldn't, I can't, uh, we had one this morning and our teacher was there, but I couldn't tell you what happened. Now I can't remember what happened, what it was. But I dreamed about our teacher being like with a bunch of us doing something. And then the other day I, I woke up, I dreamt that there was, I was sitting in some meditation or something and some guy dressed as like a bee was, he was, you could, he was human, but he was, he had like um, yellow and black stripes and his hair was black on top and yellow here. And he kept blowing like, like turning to me and blowing on me 
which was to teach me just to not get distracted. I don't, I just having weird dreams. I got to think about this a little bit more, but see, there's another thing on my to-do list, but that's, what's been helping me is just to have a little check-in at night. Right. Like when I do my healing then that's funny because I have to keep pulling myself back as I fall asleep because I wander off into fantasy world, which is quite interesting. Uh, what I've been trying to do, which I learned from our friend Vicky, that is actually one of our previous videos. We have the lovely Vicky Sondheim um, as a guest. Um, so a lot of the work she's doing now is about like embodying as in feeling, which is what I, I, I know that's where my focus needs to be now. So I do sometimes do that when I'm meditating is actually just, just try to feel. Like feel the air on my skin, feel the clothes on my skin, feel the, mm. feel what it feels to be in my hands, you know, and actually really trying to focus on the body. That sometimes helps me to... Mm. um that sounds lovely bring it inside if you like because i i go through phases if i'm really distracted i will try and listen to someone but i find if i'm really distracted actually i just stop mm -hmm. because i'm just wasting time essentially and usually getting myself in an untethered hissy fit <laughs> sort of subconsciously and listening to someone else doesn't necessarily change that or yeah. I'll go back to them, like David G who's on um insight timer I just think he's got the sexiest voice in the world um and he's just really it's a really gentle loving you know take you know but he says like comfort is queen feather your nest mm. I'm in a very very sexy voice mm. um but yeah that's, I'll do that if I get a little bit of David G if I feel like I need some nurturing hmm. yeah I've actually, for me, I've actually called my podcasts of late, ones that I listened to religiously disappeared, like my Abraham Hicks ones that I got two a day, both disappeared. I personally think they're pirated. <laughs> and then she finds, they find them and they take them down, but they're gone now, which that's fine. It's also a sign. Oh, I thought you meant you'd stopped. No, they, they, those two got disappeared. Those got disappeared. Those two disappeared. Others that I would listen to, like there's a bird um, bird note that comes out every day. It's two minutes. I've been falling behind, been falling behind on my course in miracles, which I'm going through it again for the second time. I'm falling behind and I'm okay. Usually I would not be okay with it. I'm letting myself be okay with it. Good. I don't, and also like knowing that some things on my to-do list are I'm doing like more severe prioritization things that like the particularly like the sleep study. Yeah, I would like to. I do could it. honestly, I can send you some the and they're free, so I'm not copyright breaking copyright or anything. They're from his free things. I can send you four PDFs, but one of them in particular, he addresses in order of effectiveness the things you can do. So even if you hit the first three, you are actually covering 93%, I'm making the numbers up, obviously, 93% of the problems. Mm. Like it, it goes for the big hitters first. Mm. And I can actually tell you what they are. One of them is darkness at night, either by making sure there is no light. The other is wearing blue glass or not going near your phone, tele uh, television, anything with a blue, because you get the ones that stop green light, but you need to stop blue light as well wear them an hour before you go to sleep those two things alone make a massive difference yeah i need those. the other is regular sleep hours which i assume you do regardless of what day of the week it is you always get up and go to bed at the same time pretty much yeah yeah um, i think age also dictates that like i can't stay up like i used to I do oh, but i'll look them out honestly i think there's a before you go in for really big and expensive things there are quite a few things you you can do that will make a considerable difference I think yeah I I have a um I have a little skepticism um of all the tests and whatnot that anybody would any doctor would want you to do well I do think a lot of them I mean okay I don't want to like people should be tested for different things like my grandmother died of colon cancer so I do get regular tests for colon cancer like things like that okay the, the other thing though that two, that two forces have, have talked with me about, one is my doctor that I still talk with in Anchorage, who's a naturopath. And um, she's like, yes, you were born with DNA, but you also have the ability to not turn it on by choices that you make in diet and exercise and just your overall mental and, health and spiritual health. So I have that in my mind. The other thing is I started reading Abraham Hicks, Law of Attraction and Abundance or Manif whatever that book, 
finally came into the library. I've asked for this book for months. So finally, it must be time for me to read this book. Which and one is it? It's The Law of Attraction, Abundance one. I don't know the title. It's on my nightstand. It's not here at my desk. Um, but I'm not very, but I can only read little bits at a time because it's just, and they say this even too, right? That it you absorb it. There's a bit though where he talks, Jerry is talking and he says, because at this point he was still in the human body, that they hadn't been to the doctor in years. Because they're happy. Because they're happy. And I'm like, yeah. Mm hmm which I don't know. I just, I'm having this little conversation with myself about the medical system in the United States. I'm a little annoyed, right. oh, more than a little true. annoyed. So I don't want to talk about this because we have balance. But yeah, I mean, there's just, I just. I, I, right, so we went to, uh, oh, that's such a really frustrating. I can't be in public anymore, I've decided. Mm -hmm. I only had to go to the pharmacy for an appointment. And I was fucking livid. I was actually sitting doing energy management because they're just so disorganized. Mm. And you're just like, I just can't be around people. You're just all pissing me off. Anyway, went to get an inoculations because we're going to Egypt. Um, and he, so this is a private clinic, but they are attached to the doctors and you fill in all the forms and everything. Fill them all in online. Obviously, none of that goes through. So I had to do it all again when we got there. You're the expert. It could have, you know, I could have looked all this stuff up myself online, but we weren't sure what inoculations we had. We have an incomplete record. We have a record up to 2017 and then something written down that we can't quite work out because it's not all joined up because we had to go to a private clinic to get it and apparently it doesn't make its way back. Anywho, he's like, oh, that's fine, we'll just give you them again. Like, really? And it's this is the... Right, we'll not get upset about it, but suffice to say... But okay, we didn't have to pay for anything. I think if I'd wanted rabies, we'd have had to pay, but we didn't have to pay for the rest because it's um, NHS. And you're like, but somebody's paying for it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's it may be free to, it's never free. Nothing's free. A, totally disagree with um, just inoculating people left, right and centre anyway. B, inoculating something with something that actually would not, I could be annoying, but I just, all I have to do is go back to the doctor and find out what my records really were or something they should do. If they're inoculating people, they should know when you were last inoculated. They should not be giving people vaccines just because they're available and because it's free. Like you said, it won't cost you anything. That's not the point. And I sort of said, I said, I'm not keen. I was very careful. I just said, I'm not keen on just having vaccinations for the sake of it if I don't need it. Oh, he said, there's more allergens in any piece of food you eat than you'll ever find in inoculation. I thought, Bleh. untrue. And, and B, I don't eat shit, mate. Like, mm -hmm. I am not eating scotch pies that have been deep fried in, in pig's liver or whatever. You know, I, I don't. Like, pig's liver's fine. It's a deep, you know, but it's like I'm not eating that sort of food. Mm -hmm. So, no, there isn't. You're putting mercury in lead and some latent disease essentially in my body I just that attitude I don't understand right let's not go there no no yeah back to balance yeah and finding back to balance. balance there is always a balance but I think that you know what that what is the most significant thing you've said in this whole time is actually that about Jerry and Esther all the things we worry about the things that will actually make us well and healthy and ironically rich and happy is actually our happiness in the first place mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's yeah. so simple mm -hmm. just none of us know how to do it yeah yeah and it, what I also find in this whole several months of practicing to find balance or to practicing to practice however I don't know to get to the get feel like I'm a little bit more in balance which I may never feel right because it might just be part of what I'm working on um Lucas is just is well he's always at usually at my feet right he's at my feet right now um but when he gets antsy I can tell he's trying to say to me get up out of your chair let's go for a walk let's go outside and get some sun on our face or something and at that moment when he's sometimes when he was first doing it I'm like oh, like really now like I'm right like in the middle like I don't want to and then I'm like, oh, wait a minute, you're trying to help me. And then I would notice how 
this whole part of my body just feels like I'm doing this and I can feel the weight of the world on my shoulders. All of this caves in, I can't breathe properly. And then I'm like, okay, yeah, you've got it. You're right. I see what you're doing. Um, he's starting to come back last night because it's also getting colder, but he's sleeping back in bed with us, which is oh. also, I think part of that trying to find balance is like, okay, yeah, you know, I'm here. What's so interesting though, is like parts of my body hurt that I don't know what, like I just did that. This all of a sudden just started to hurt last week. This arm from back here, it's almost like I got a shot in the back here and it went and my whole arm was tight. I don't know what that's about. I think that's stress or something completely different, which we're going to talk about in a different episode. But it's fine to be stressed if you're feeling yeah. overwhelmed, just the way you hold yourself. Yeah, yeah. But I, just I did the same thing. I was getting all saucy about something and she doesn't often play in the house. She just came in and, and started pissing about in a, in a, first of all, she had a face in my water, like about that far down. So she's like this desperately trying to actually get her she got really long time trying to drink she's obsessed with drinking my water and then she went and jumped into like a shopping bag and started pissing about and I know what it is because she's making me laugh because I'm getting all like mm, you know and that's just it your first reaction she comes and stamps all over my keyboard and I'm, as soon as I'm irritated I'm like and that's exactly the point Mm -hmm. I'm getting irritated and frustrated because I have this idea that I am supposed to be doing something and now you're stopping me doing it and she's going uh huh. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly why I'm stamping all over your keyboard, you silly little girl. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, they are so wise, our animals. They are. They are. And on that happy note, Julie. I need to get, I, we need to go, sadly. Are your animals are calling you, mine are calling me. Just, yeah. So we will leave it there. So thank you very much for joining us today as we discussed finding balance here on Making Light Two Humans Being. I'm Julie Heert. With me, as always, my partner in crime, the balancing yeah. act that she is, <laughs> is Kate Fago. Uh, please subscribe to our channel. As you may or may not know, we're trying to reach 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We've got three months to go. So please help us share it, talk about it, engage with us. We also want to hear from you. So hit that subscribe button. Um, and if you have any comments or questions, leave them below. Uh, we will see you next week here on Making Light to Humans Being. Thank you for being here.